Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management, and we're still calculating safety stock. Only this time, when we're trying to calculate the safety stock, we're not given a lead time demand and a standard deviation of the lead time demand. What we are given are demand and standard deviation of demand, and sometimes the lead time is variable, sometimes the lead time is not variable. So what we're going to have to do is calculate that lead time demand as well as the standard deviation of the lead time demand. So sometimes you know that the lead time is static. It's L and it's very constant, but the demand itself is variable. So we have to calculate that lead time demand and the standard deviation of lead time demand. So we're typically given the demand, how much is expected to be used per given time of day, week, month, etc., as well as the standard deviation for that demand. And we're also given a lead time. So to calculate the lead time demand, we're just going to multiply the lead time by the demand. Very simple. And to get the standard deviation of the lead time demand, it's a little bit different. We're going to take the square root of the lead time and multiply it by the standard deviation of the demand. So if we use a simple example, here Riley is trying to figure out how much extra inventory of ink cartridges to keep. And during the past year, the demand per day was variable with a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of three. And the lead time was constant at five days. Riley wants to maintain a 90% service level. We wanna figure out the safety stock and the reorder point. Notice in this problem, we know that the demand itself is variable because we're given a mean and a standard deviation, but the lead time is constant at five days. So let's do those calculations. The lead time demand is gonna be just equal to the lead time times the demand. We know the lead time is five, the demand is 20. So we expect to use 100 ink cartridges between the time we place the order and the time we receive it. But for the standard deviation of the lead time demand, we're going to take the square root of five, multiply it by the standard deviation of the demand, and we end up with 6.708. So now we've calculated the LTD, the lead time demand, and the standard deviation of the lead time demand, which means we can just go back to the material from the last session to calculate safety stock our Z statistic times the standard deviation of lead time demand. We calculate that Z statistic using the service level that we were given, which was 90%, and we use Excel to use the norms inverse formula, and we get 1.28, and we multiply that 1.28 by the standard deviation of lead time demand, and we get 8.6. And as always, when dealing with safety stock, we always round up. So our safety stock is going to be nine ink cartridges. And our reorder point, we take our lead time demand, add our safety stock, and we're at 109. So when we look at the inventory and we realize we're down to 109 ink cartridges, we place our order. But sometimes the lead time is also variable, not just the demand. And we still have to calculate that lead time demand and the standard deviation for the lead time demand. So we're typically given a value for the demand, R, and the standard deviation of the demand. And we'll also be given a lead time, L, and the standard deviation of the lead time. Now using all four of those values, we're going to end up calculating the lead time demand, which is just the lead time times the demand, and the standard deviation of that lead time demand. Now notice this is a much different formula than what we had before. It's a little bit complicated and when you use it, you have to be very careful that you're, uh, you're taking the square root of the whole equation and make sure your parentheses and so forth are in the correct place. So when we look at an example, here we have Robin trying to figure out how much extra inventory of boxes of imported chocolate to keep. During the past year, the demand per week was variable with a mean of 85 and a standard deviation of 12. Lead time was also variable with a mean of six weeks 
at a standard deviation of 2. So now we have a value for the demand along with its standard deviation, a value for the lead time along with that standard deviation, and we know what the service level, in this case again 90%. We want to calculate the safety stock as well as the reorder point. We're using the variables that we were given and we calculate the lead time demand to be 510 and the standard deviation of that lead time demand is 172.52. Again, we go back to the standard safety stock equation, Z times the standard deviation of lead time demand. We calculate our Z statistic. We calculate our safety stock. Always round up, so we're up to 222 in our safety stock. And our reorder point is our lead time demand plus the safety stock. 510 plus 222. So when our inventory level goes down to 732 boxes of chocolate, we're placing our order. So when do you know when to use the right model for calculating safety stock? The first question, are the demand and the lead time constant? Yes, no safety stock is needed. Is the lead time demand variable? Yes, we're going to calculate the safety stock using the Z times the standard deviation of the lead time demand. Is the lead time constant with the demand variable? We calculate that lead time demand and the standard deviation of the lead time demand, then calculate safety stock. If both lead time and demand are variable, again, we're going to calculate that lead time demand and the standard deviation of the lead time demand, then calculate the safety stock. Now, we've been talking a lot about service level, and we've been using 90% a lot. But in the next session, we're going to talk about what drives that service level, how we try and calculate what that service level should be. I'll see you then.